Welcome to the Machinist 30 to 80 Skills Guide. In this guide, we'll recover all of your skills as you train to get in the Robot Shinji better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this... ...to this. This guide is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved with perfect openers and overall rotations. We will, however, be crafting openers as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 50 for a Realm Reborn, level 60 for Heaven's Word, 70 for Stormblood, and then finally at level 80 for Shadowbringers. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the General tab of your Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 80. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you're leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. With that all out of the way, let's begin! To become a Machinist, you must first finish the entire Arom Reborn storyline, ending on the quest Before the Dawn. Accept the first quest of Heaven's Word, coming to Ishgard, and you will be allowed to explore Ishgard at your leisure. Machinist's starting quest is in the Foundation, in the West, at the Sky Steel Manufactory Aetherite Shard. Any and all other requirements will be met by normally playing the game. In addition to all of your normal skills, you start with most of your roll actions. Leg Graze, Second Wind, Foot Graze, Peloton, and Head Graze. Two levels later after obtaining the job is Arm's Length, the final roll action. Make room for these as they are important to your performance as a Machinist. Check the Ranged Roll Actions Guide in the description if you need an in-depth look into each of these skills. Now onto our starting toolkit. At level 20 is Increased Action Damage, which increases damage by 10%. Pretend this isn't here. Level 1, Level 2, and Level 26, Split Shot, Slug Shot, and Clean Shot. Our starting basic combo leads with Split Shot, doing 180 potency of damage to the target. It also increases our Heat Gauge by 5 points. We'll get into the Heat Gauge later. For now, make note of this gauge increase. Next up is Slug Shot, doing 260 potency when comboed off of Split Shot. If you've somehow not seen how a combo looks by now, it looks like so. Always aim to do your combos. I will not be making note of uncomboed potencies because you have no reason to skip combo actions. Additionally to the 260 potency hit, this also increases our heat gauge by 5. Finally, it leads into Clean Shot, which is 340 potency and increases your heat gauge by 5 as well. This basic 1, 2, 3 is what we fall back on when we're out of other stuff to do. It's for single target only, and we'll get into our AoE soon. Level 4, Hot Shot. This does a 300 potency hit to the enemy, and while it is a weapon skill, it has its own separate 40 second cooldown. It is on the global cooldown, so you can't weave it between combo hits. Additionally, if you do use this in the middle of a combo, it does not break the combo, so you can split shot, hot shot, slug shot, and keep the combo running. This attack does take priority over your main combo. It is overall slightly stronger than your full combo, so keep this on cooldown. For now, that's all it does. Level 18, Spread Shot. This is our AoE GCD. It does 180 potency in a melee ranged cone in front of you that extends for 12 yams, which is quite a large range. Anytime there are two or more enemies, spam this instead of your other attacks. Most jobs enter into AoE on three or more enemies, but Machinist gets to start at two enemies. 
Spreadshot is immensely powerful and should be used in every chance you get, at least until higher levels. By level 80, you downgrade to three enemies to start AoEing. Additionally, this also gives five heat gauge. This will be nice later. For now, let's move on to our off globals. Level 15, Goss Round. This is a skill with multiple charges. The moment you use a charge, the next charge will begin to count down. We can hold up to two charges of Goss Round. This is a simple 150 potency of damage. This can be weaved between GCDs, so we should use it as such. Ultimately, this is an extra 300 potency every minute. Feel free to use this in trash pools too, even if it's only a single target getting hit by it. It's free damage, no matter when you use it. Level 10, Reassemble. On a 55 second recast, and yes, that number makes sense later, this makes your next weapon skill a guaranteed direct critical hit. We also get a dot weapon skill much later, so it clarifies now that the dot itself will not be a direct crit dot, only the main hit. Always aim to use this on your biggest hits, so use it on hot shot, or even better, on clean shot. It's only a 40 potency difference, but prioritizing it on clean shot where possible is smart. Additionally, this does work on all enemies for a spread shot. Every enemy hit with a reassembled spread shot will receive a direct crit. So absolutely make sure to use reassemble in trash pools. You would still want to use it even if it didn't have this effect though, because it's free damage. Finally, only use reassemble if you immediately intend to use a weapon skill. The 5 second duration of this skill can matter if you pause for any reason before your next weapon skill. Weave this between GCDs where you can. Level 30, Hypercharge. To start, this is the skill our first job quest gives us. I won't be saying further when a quest gives a skill, but I will denote it on screen. Please do your job quests. That will never not be important to keep up with. More skills is more power. Finally, we get to our heat gauge. This gauge has been slowly building as we use most of our weapon skills. The only use of this gauge is for hypercharge, which costs 50 gauge, is on a 10 second cooldown which basically never comes into play, and lasts for 8 seconds. For 8 seconds, all of your single target weapon skills will do 20 extra potency. This can only fit 3 attacks, so it's worth only 60 potency. That sounds absolutely terrible, but it makes sense later. For now, use that 60 potency when you can. And of course, keep a note of the fact it says for single target attacks only. Spread Shot will do nothing extra under Hypercharge, so save Hypercharge for single target only. The gauge caps all the way at 100, and we don't gain a lot of heat so far, so there's no worry of losing any heat. While our next skill is extremely important, I'm going to give you an opener now just because of the point we can sink even lower than 30. It's extremely simple, but it's good to get you thinking about it sooner than later. Hot Shot, Goss Round, Split Shot, Goss Round, Slug Shot, Reassemble, Clean Shot. Yep, that's it. We won't see our first hypercharge for two more combos, so we don't even worry about that so far as in terms of our opener. We lead off with Hot Shot because it's heavy damage and we want to get it on cooldown. We weave in our first Goss round as well to get the recharge going. From here, we start our combo. Weave in another Goss round to spend the other charge, and then reassemble our Clean Shot since it's our strongest GCD. In general, keep all of your cooldowns on cooldown and hypercharge wherever you can. Keep your GCD rolling at all times, and remember to AoE anytime there are multiple enemies as we move on. Level 35, Heat Blast. Now Hypercharge makes sense. This skill can only be used while overheated from Hypercharge. It also has a fixed 1.5 recast time no matter how much skill speed you have. 
It has 220 potency and an additional effect to reduce the cast time of Gauss Round and Ricochet, which we don't even have until level 50. This is also 15 seconds every time you Heat Blast, not just one time per Hypercharge. This also increases the number of GCDs we can get under Hypercharge to 5. Ideally, we want to do 5 Heat Blasts, then go back to normal GCDs. Every single time you can, 5 Heat Blasts is the way to go under Hypercharge. Either way, Hypercharge is now worth 100 potency on its own, but we also gain a lot of potency from Heat Blast spam, plus the 2.5 extra Gauss rounds, which, because of the cooldown acceleration, get used to also weaving during Heat Blast spam. For example, Heat Blast, Gauss Round, Heat Blast, Gauss Round, Heat Blast, Heat Blast, Gauss Round, and a fifth Heat Blast. Especially once we have Ricochet later. Also, get it in your head now that you can only fit one weave between Heat Blasts. You cannot use two abilities between Heat Blasts. Level 40, Increased Action Damage 2. Now it's 20%. Once again, who cares, you won't notice. Level 40, Rook Auto Turret and Rook Overdrive. Before I even get into these skills, we have a second gauge now, the Battery Gauge. We filled this up using Hot Shot to gain 20 Battery Gauge, and finishing combos with Clean Shot for 10 Gauge. This further increases our desire to use Hot Shot and open a fight with it to keep it on cooldown. Once we finally have at least 50 battery, we can use Rook Auto Turret. This has a 6 second recast, which will almost never come into play, and deploys a single target attacking turret, which deals 80 potency of damage per hit. This is essentially a fancy dot, dealing damage every 3 seconds. This will deplete your entire gauge, not just take 50 gauge, and give the turret more time based on how much extra gauge you have. The minimum time is 8 seconds on the turret, and the max is 15 seconds. Because of how time scales, we want to wait until around 80 gauge, but be careful not to overcap. The gauge caps at 100, so be careful as to not hot shot if you get to 90 gauge. And because of how slow we gain gauge, we should also save this for single target, mostly bosses. We gain no battery from AoE, and it's a single target attacker, so no reason to use it in trash. It will change targets to attack whatever secondary target you might swap to, though. Finally, no matter what, when the timer runs out, or when you activate it manually using Rook Overdrive, the turret will perform Rook Overdrive, and at minimum, this is a 200 potency attack to a max of 400 potency. This is based on how much battery you use to summon the turret. You should always let the turret do this on its own, unless one of two situations crop up. The enemy is about to die, or it's about to jump away from the arena and become immune to damage. By the time you've unlocked Mechanist, you've seen plenty of bosses do this. Overall, Treat this like a single target dot, a powerful one at that. If nothing else, the 400 potency finisher on its own is huge. Also, it's still early on, so not many party members will have buffs to help the party, but summon your turret during party buffs, when you can for increased damage from the turret. Level 45, Wildfire. On a 120 second cooldown, this places a special debuff on the target for 10 seconds. When the timer runs out, Wildfire will explode. For every weapon skill you land on the target for the duration of Wildfire, Wildfire will increase in potency by 150 potency per weapon skill. You should ideally pair this with Hypercharge, which will lead you to get 6 GCDs under Wildfire for 900 potency from the explosion. This is a lot of damage and best case scenario for using this on random trash is 600 potency on just that target thanks to spread shot. That isn't to say only use it on bosses or enemies with a ton of health, as 2 minutes really isn't that long of a cooldown, to the point that if you're nowhere near the boss, you should pop wildfire on a random trash mob. But if a boss is soon, 
you'd likely be better off saving it for the boss. And just to make sure you see how to manage six GCDs under wildfire, here's a mini snippet of a rotation. Whatever GCD you need to do first, then weave in hypercharge. Then do your five heat blasts. After the first heat blast, weave in wildfire and continue your spam. Don't forget to spend goss rounds too. Finally, after the fifth heat blast, you do a final two GCDs to get them under wildfire, then go back to your normal flow. Only reason to use detonation to prematurely end wildfire is the same as with Rook Auto Turret. The enemy is going to die, or it's going to become immune. These aren't the most common scenarios, but they are the only scenarios to warrant it. Level 50, Ricochet. On a 30 second cooldown and with two charges, this does 150 potency to the target, just like a Goss Round. But this also is an AoE that does 75 potency to all enemies within five yams of the original target. This is even much more important to use in trash pulls than Goss Round between your spread shots. But the base potency is 150 potency, so be sure to use it on bosses as well. Remember that Heat Blast also reduces the cooldown of Ricochet by 15 seconds, so more Heat Blasts are better now. More Heat Blasts, more Ricochets. But that wraps up our full A Realm Reborn toolkit. Not much changes from level 30, but this time I'm going to extend the opener because of Goss Round and Ricochet both being available now, and additional changes based on what we'll be doing later as a Machinist. Either way, let's get into the new opener and see all that we will do. Pre-pull reassemble, then do the following. Hot shot, Goss Round, Ricochet, Split Shot, Slug Shot, Goss Round, Ricochet, Clean Shot, Split Shot, Slug Shot, Clean Shot, Split Shot, Slug Shot, Clean Shot, Split Shot, Hypercharge, Heat Blast, Wildfire, Heat Blast, Goss Round, Heat Blast, Ricochet, Heat Blast, Goss Round, Heat Blast, Ricochet, Slug Shot, Goss Round, Clean Shot, Ricochet, Hot Shot, and then Rook Auto Turret to finish it off. From here, we just keep going through the flow of our rotation. Let me just say that this is the messiest of all the rotations I will show, just because we're still low level. A lot of this gets condensed and smoothed out when we're at higher levels. We start with reassemble before the pool so we can start the cooldown extremely early, then use it on hotshot the moment the tank pulls. As mentioned, hotshot is one of our highest potency skills so this does make sense, and will make more sense in future openers. We then lead directly into a double weave of both Goss Round and Ricochet to get both of them on cooldown for the next charges. And again, this comes back later. From here, we start going through our main combo for a bit. The second double weave after Slug Shot can be safely turned into two separate single weaves if you need to. However, it is a double weave here to practice for later on for when we get more skills and have to double weave more. I recommend trying this now, just to get used to it when we have much more to do. Afterwards, we don't really do anything until we have enough gauge for hypercharge, just spamming our GCD combo until then. After the third full combo, we'll be at 45 gauge, which means one final split shot will cause us to hit 50 gauge for hypercharge, which we'll use in the second half of our GCD. During Hypercharge, we are going to lose out on the benefits, but again, this is all for muscle memory for later. We'll get five Heat Blasts. After the first, we weave in Wildfire to get six GCDs under the effect of that. Four of them will be Heat Blasts. Between each of the Heat Blasts will be a Goss Round and a Ricochet Charge. We're going to regain a lot of Goss Rounds and Ricochet Charges, during this, so we'll need to alternate to make the best use of these charges and waste the minimum you can. After getting out of hypercharge, we'll continue to use our charges between GCDs. 
single weaving only because of the previous hypercharge being busy enough to warrant it. By the time we finish our combo, Hotshot will be off cooldown, so we can clean shot, weave one last time, then Hotshot to get our Rook auto turret at exactly 80 battery. From here, we'll just keep spamming our main combo and using stuff essentially off cooldown. Pair reassemble with hot shot and clean shot only. Keep spending your Goss and Ricochet charges, and hypercharge every time you can. If Wildfire is almost off cooldown, save up your heat so you can go into hypercharge the moment it comes up. And again, AoE is simple to do. Just one button and throw out all of your OGCDs at randomly, essentially. AoE starts at just two enemies for Machinist. Phew! This busy enough for you? Good news is, it doesn't get much busier than this. Bad news is, there are still one or two more tricks to get into. Starting off is the most exciting one, in Heaven's Word. Level 52, Auto Crossbow. Our first Edgar Figaro tool is an AoE use for Hypercharge. This is 180 potency just like Spreadshot, but the much faster 1.5 second cooldown makes this way better to use. Assuming no skill speed, this is 40% faster of a cooldown, so translating into potency, it would be 252 potency instead of 180. If you have heat to spare, be sure to absolutely use hypercharge for AoE. Auto crossbow is not to be trifled with. It is strong. Level 54, Split Shot Mastery and Heated Split Shot. The trade is just there to denote the upgrade to Split Shot. This is a small 40 potency boost to Split Shot. It also lets us do a cool flip. Otherwise, there's no other changes with this. Level 56, Tactician. On a 120 second cooldown, everyone within 20 yards of you, including yourself, gets a 15 second long buff that reduces all damage by 10% and does not stack with the Bard and Dancer forms of this skill. You can only have one up at a time. When by yourself, pop this anytime you think you're going to take a lot of damage, avoidable or unavoidable. In party content, use this for raid-wide party damage, especially the harder hitting hits. This shines especially well in extreme and savage difficulties, but there's no reason to hold onto it in dungeons and hard trials when you could be helping out the healers, even just a little bit. Don't use this for ultimate attacks typically though, use it for general AoE in the middle of fights. Additionally, this is a trash pull skill. While it is only going to have an effect on the tank, using this as a tank cooldown is very useful, especially if the tank is pulling a ton of enemies at once. This makes dungeon runs much safer as a result. Your healers and tanks will thank you for helping them out. Level 58, DRILL! Edgar Figaro Part 2 is a weapon skill that does get reduced by skill speed, but it has a base 20 second cooldown. Just like Hotshot, this activates the global cooldown and is affected by the global cooldown, and also does not break combos. Unlike Hotshot though, this is 700 potency. If it's not obvious, move reassemble onto Drill immediately and only use it on Drill. This is huge damage so huge that it's stronger than spread shot on even three enemies and is only barely edged out on four enemies. Use this every single time it comes off cooldown unless you're fighting a decently sized group of enemies that AoE takes over. Even then, you only use it once every 20 seconds, so you'd be forced to swap to AoE if you used it in a bad spot anyway. Also, like, it's a giant drill? Did you need another reason to use it? Well, we have one, our new opener. We don't need to wait until level 60 to learn it, and something to follow until you hit Stormblood is learned better now than later. Let's go over the opener. And as a note, in this opener and the next two openers, I'll be dropping the heated from our shot names. 
There's enough skill names to be said here without me saying heated like 10 times. Pre-pull reassemble, then do the following. Drill, Goss Round, Ricochet, Split Shot, Slug Shot, Hot Shot, Goss Round, Ricochet, Clean Shot, Split Shot, Slug Shot, Clean Shot, Drill, Split Shot, Slug Shot, Clean Shot, Split Shot, Hypercharge, Heat Blast, Wildfire, Heat Blast, Goss Round, Heat Blast, Ricochet, Heat Blast, Goss Round, Heat Blast, Ricochet, Drill, Goss Round, Ricochet, Slug Shot, Clean Shot, Hot Shot, Rock Auto Turret. Instead of Reassemble Hot Shot, we get to use it on Drill. And remember that second double weave of Goss Round and Ricochet from before? It's because it's after Hot Shot in our new opener, which is now delayed by two GCDs. This will be during buff windows thanks to your party, and most jobs have some party buffs at this level. The few stragglers, Machinus not included, will have some at level 70, so it's good to get used to it now, and for more reasons later. By the time we finally build up enough gauge to get into Hypercharge this time, we'll get a second drill out. We'll keep going until Hypercharge, and do that all the same. As we finish off Hypercharge, this time we get a third drill. This is the second drill after Hotshot, which evens out that we held back Hotshot at the start of the opener by two GCDs. So after we finish our next basic combo, we still get that second Hotshot, like before, to get out our turret. From here we do what we did before, spam basic combo, use our cooldowns when they come up, and hypercharge when you can. Save some gauge for wildfire, and prepare for the spam phases. It's subtle changes, but it adds up quickly, especially since Drill is so strong. Fit it in every time you can, and keep up the flow. Level 60, Slugshot Mastery, and Heated Slugshot. All the same as with Split Shot. The trait is there to denote the update, which Heated Split Shot is a 70 potency increase. This is much more significant a power boost, but not quite as cool of a flip. See why I went over the opener with Drill? Tactician is really cool, Auto Crossbow buffed our AoE capabilities, but only Drill has any effect on our opener. Make use of Hypercharge in AoE, use Tactician to block AoE damage, and spam Drill where you can, in addition to doing everything else as normal. Then, head on into Stormblood. Level 64, Clean Shot Mastery and Heated Clean Shot. For the third time, the trait just says we have an upgrade. Heated Clean Shot gets a flip, two little turret thingies, and a 100 potency increase. Enjoy the extra power. Level 66, Barrel Stabilizer. Finally, a real game changer. On a two minute cooldown and only usable while in combat, this instantly gives us 50 heat. Recall that Wildfire is also a 2 minute cooldown. These should always be paired together as a result. Use Barrel Stabilizers for the free entry into Hypercharge, so you can Wildfire it up. Also, feel free to use Barrel Stabilizer in Trash Pools too. Remember, Auto Crossbow is stupid strong. But this is the tool that changes our opener again for Stormblood. And again, the only one. So we'll go over our opener now, then go over the rest of the Stormblood toolkit. Let's get into it. Pre-pull reassemble, then do the following. Drill. Goss round. Ricochet. Split shot. Barrel stabilizer. Slug shot. Hot shot. Goss round. Ricochet. Clean shot. Hypercharge, Heat Blast, Wildfire, Heat Blast, 
Gauss Round, Heat Blast, Ricochet, Heat Blast, Gauss Round, Heat Blast, Ricochet, Drill, Ricochet, Gauss Round, Split Shot, and move into our normal rotation from here. This massively reduced the size of our rotational opener, just by nature of not needing to farm heat to get into hypercharge. This is what makes the other rotations and their delays make even more sense. We don't try to weave barrel stabilizer since we're still waiting on team buffs and so there's no reason why to weave in extra skills. From here, it's just a matter of spending all of our non-hyperdrive skills to make use of heat blast cooldown regenerations. And just like the previous opener, when we get out of hyperdrive, we have our next drill ready to spend. And from there, it's just spending our next few GCDs emptying our Goss round and ricochet again. Do everything otherwise the same as before, but now you can dedicate all of your heat to hypercharges at random times, since Barrel Stabilizer is our wildfire tied heat. Much shorter and way smoother just from one skill. And our next rotation isn't much different from here, to the point of being basically the exact same. Keep this in mind and really practice up on everything you've learned thus far. Level 70, Flamethrower. On a 60 second cooldown, this is a 100 potency channeled AoE that reaches 8 yams in a cone. Whatever direction you are facing, you start spewing a flamethrower for 10 seconds straight that does 100 potency per hit. If you try to take any other action during Flamethrower, including any and all movement, the Flamethrower will end prematurely. The thing about Flamethrower is this does not act like a normal dot. Where a dot normally is every 3 seconds on the server tick, Flamethrower hits the moment it connects and once per second for a total of 11 hits. Fully, this is 1100 potency over the 10 second duration. You also don't auto attack during this, but as an AoE skill, auto attacks don't matter much. This should be what you fall back to when you used up all of your heat. The priority of AoE should be as follows, to be auto crossbow and OGCD spam, then go into flamethrower from a good position, and fall back to spread shot when it's done. The biggest issue with this skill is the fact that you have to stay still to use it. If you start channeling Flamethrower and an AoE gets thrown at you, to dodge you have to leave Flamethrower. But a dead DPS does no DPS, so make sure you live. But where you can, get the full duration of Flamethrower. This is huge damage in such a short time in an AoE environment. Also be sure to face the enemies before using Flamethrower, as auto face will not put you towards the enemies. You start shooting in whatever direction you are currently facing. Overall, we've once again not seen many changes. We've just been sanding down the rough edges that A Realm Reborn started us off with and giving us more tools to be more powerful. The kit slowly builds upon itself and that's not going to be much different when we get into Shadowbringers. Level 72, Bio Blaster. For our next Edgar Figaro cosplay skill, this is an AoE drill. It shares the same 20 second recast, but does 60 potency to all enemies in a 12 yom cone. Additionally, it applies a normal dot of 60 potency on the 3 second server tick, and it will hit 5 times for a total of 300 potency on the dot, and 360 potency when including the initial hit. Summarily, on two or more enemies, this is stronger than Drill, but a Reassemble Drill is likely stronger too, so you may want to save it for three enemies. Get the tank to gather up all the enemies, then Bio Blast them all away. If it wasn't already obvious how strong AoE is before now, it sure is obvious now with how much this chews through enemy HP. The more enemies you hit with this, the more the potency explodes into the ridiculous numbers. Level 74, Charged Action Mastery. This is simple and to the point. We now have three charges each of the Goss Round and Ricochet. And similarly to the expansions before, this is the only skill that changes our opener. 
So rather than waiting for level 80, let's get you practicing the final opener now. Free pull reassemble, then do the following. Drill. Goss round. Ricochet. Split shot. Barrel stabilizer. Slug shot. Hot shot. Goss round. Ricochet. Clean shot. Goss round. Hypercharge. Heat blast. Wildfire. Heat blast. Ricochet. Heat blast. Goss round. Heat blast. Ricochet. Heat blast. Goss round. Drill. Ricochet. Goss round. Split shot. Ricochet. And move on to normal rotation from here. A big thing here that changes is thanks to the third set of charges, we won't waste any of the recharge time from Heat Blast. We also fit in the third Goss round and a double weave with Hypercharge. Because of this, we start our alternating of a Heat Blast OGCDs with Ricochet instead of Goss round, as to not lose any Ricochet charges. And by the end, we've gained so much time, we have three OGCDs to spend after the hypercharge ends. If it wasn't busy enough before, these two extra charges should keep you on your toes during hypercharge windows. Get used to it, because the extra power adds up fast. Level 76, Hot Shot Mastery and Air Anchor. This is simply another buff, but it's our final Edgar Figaro skill, and a massive power boost at that. This is now 700 potency to match the power of Drill. Everything else about the skill remains the same, but it's a 400 potency increase on top of Hotshot. Enjoy the cool new animation and big damage. While this doesn't change our opener, this does let us have two possible options to use Reassemble on. A Reassemble Drill and a Reassemble Air Anchor come out the same. More options just means we can use Reassemble easier. Level 78, Enhanced Wildfire. This increased Wildfire's potency by 50 for every weapon skill used under the buff, from 150 to 200. Now you should be getting a massive 1200 potency explosion at the end of the timer. Just like most of the other traits, it's really just a nice power boost. Level 80, Promotion and Automatron Queen. Promotion promotes not us, but our tiny auto turret into a giant robot with its own rotation. Rook auto turret becomes Automatron Queen. Rook Overdrive has also become Queen Overdrive. Much like before, you need a minimum of 50 battery gauge to activate the Killer Queen, but it uses your whole gauge and gives more time based on how much gauge you had. At minimum, the Queen lasts for 12 seconds, up to a maximum of 20 seconds. This is also not factoring the long summon time, which lowers the effective attack time of the robot. Either way, when summoned, if not in melee range, Queen will open with Roller Dash to get in range. This has double the power, 300 potency, but double the recast time, 3 seconds, of the normal attack, Arm Punch, which is 150 potency, for a 1.5 second recast. The Queen will use Arm Punch repeatedly on its own while it remains in range. If it is not in range of the enemy, it will roll a dash back into range again. Letting the timer run out while using Queen Overdrive to end it prematurely will have the Queen finish off with Pile Bunker. This nuke does 400 potency minimum to a maximum 800 potency scaled based on how much battery you use to summon the Queen. Overall, the main point you want to summon your Queen is during party buffs. Where the turret you often wanted to save for 80 gauge, and do it during party buffs where possible, Queen scales better to the point that any time there are party buffs, bring in the Queen. That pile bunker when buffed is too strong to ignore. Just be careful not to overcap on gauge. You might hold until 100 gauge for that next party buff, but if you're going to lose gauge because of it, just throw the queen out. Once again, a major power boost, but overall not going to change how you do things. 
Battery is best spent during raid buffs, but never overcap. Hypercharge where you can to not overcap that either, and pair your barrel stabilizer with wildfire for guaranteed hypercharge windows, like in the opener. Keep practicing and make sure you don't hurt your hands or trip over ping issues. Now go kill Kefka with a chainsaw. Thank you for watching my Machinist 30 to 80 skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. My goal is to help players improve in whatever ways I can. Take care and have fun in your adventures across Eorzea. May the power of an Anidhogs lay waste to your enemies.